So now let's learn how to use the unit and conversion factors table on page 3 in the new FE handbook. So we know this can be a very powerful tool, especially let's say you're converting from meters to uh, feet. Let's say you're going from meters to feet. You're going from SI units to English units. This can be very powerful. And it has a lot of other conversions that are very helpful, especially if you're doing the FE exam. So we will learn how to use this table and we will apply these common conversions they give us to solve a few questions and a few examples. So here we know the table again is on page 3. Open that page and go with me and practice these examples with me. But I want to say here that it just says in this case in the table that if we're going from left to right, if you go from left to right, you multiply. And this even is stated in the table, right? Multiply by to obtain. So let's say you're going from acres to square feet. That's what you want. You want to take acres to square feet. You take this value. So you multiply the acre value that you're given by the 43,560 and you will get square feet. So that's how you do that. But we know the opposite is also true if you want to go in this way. So let's say I want to go from square feet to acres. What do you do? You do the opposite of multiply. You, if you're going this way, you would divide. So if you're going this way, we would take the square feet value we have and we divide by 43,560 and we get the acre value. We get the final units of acres. So again, if you're going this way, you multiply. If you're going this way, from right to left, you divide. Same thing for this, right? This way you multiply, this way you divide. So just note that and we have all of these handy conversions. So now let's do a few examples. So here, let's take this value of 10,890 square feet and convert it to acres. So the way I'll write this is how I typically solve questions is by using that dimensional analysis, right? I want to just cancel units and make it look neat. So here, what I'll do first is write the value of 10,890. And square feet is the same as feet squared like that, right? We can write it just as feet squared. So let's write it. So let's write it like that, feet squared. So what I'm going to do here is go to final units of acres, right? So we know here, this is feet squared. I must put feet squared here because they're diagonal and I want to cancel them, right? We want to cancel those. So now how many feet squared are in one acre? Here we know if we're going from square feet to acres, we can use this table, right? We can go from square feet to acres and all we do is mo divide. Sorry, we're going this way. We're going this way. So you have to divide by 43,560. Again, since we're going from square feet to acres, we have to go this way. So we divide by this value, 43,560. And what that essentially says, since we're dividing, it says there's 43,560 square feet in one acre. So that's what that means. And we just take this value of 10,890 and divide by that value and we get acres. So these cancel and we can do the math for that. 10,890 divided by 43,560. And you get about 0 0.25 acres acres and that's how you can go from the square feet to acres you divide since we're going from right to left you must divide when you use the table so now let's do the next one let's go from gallons to liters so we have 2.5 gallons I'll just write gallons like that gal and we know we put gallons here diagonal and we want liters as the final units so now we have to be careful and find the correct one so gallons will be units of volume, right? We're looking at volume and we're going from gallons to liters. So this is gallons to feet to the third cubic foot. So that's not correct. That's not the one we want. Here we have the correct one, right? I see it here. So to go from gallons to liters, we're going from this way, right? We're going this way. So all we do is multiply by this value. So all you do is multiply by 3.5. 785 so we multiply by 3.785 one gallon and I put a one there specifically to say this is all this is saying is one gallon is 
3.785 liters. So these cancel and we get units of liters and we take the 2.5 and multiply by the value and we get liters, right? So we take 2.5 times 3.785 and you get 9.4625 liters. So that's the answer for that, to go from gallons to liters. So let's practice another one. Let's go from liters to cubic meters now. So we have 5,000 liters. Let me write that. And we know, let's put liters here, and we want cubic meters at the very end. So uh, this is, now we essentially ask, how many cubic meters are in one liter, right? So now we have cubic meters. So for cubic meters, this, right? So we just use that conversion. So we're going, in this case, from liters to cubic meters. So we have to be careful. This, this way is from cubic meters to liters. So we're actually going this way, right? We're going this way. So what do we have to do? We divide by 1,000. We're going from liters to cubic meters. So we're going this way, from right to left. And each time you go from right to left, you divide. So we divide by 1,000. So we divide by 1,000. So there's a thousand liters in one cubic meter. So 5,000 divided by 1,000 will give us just five, right? And doing that, you get five cubic meters. So these cancel, and that is going to be our answer. Now let's do horsepower to what? So let's go from 450 horsepower to what? So we have to be careful and find that horsepower. So where is that horsepower? So we know here is like kilowatt, kilowatt, liter, second meter. So you can go from meter to foot, that's nice. Meter to yard. So this is a good one to know as well, meter to yard. So I recommend you just go over these and know which ones that are given to you. And the horsepower stuff is here, right? Horsepower is here. And we want to go from horsepower to what? So let's go from horsepower to what? And it's actually here, right? Horsepower to what? And we know we're going from right, sorry, from left to right. So all we do is multiply, right? We just multiply by that value, 745.7. So we take 450 horsepower and multiply by 745.7. So let me, yeah, it should be 745.7. And that should be what? And this should be one horsepower down here. So all this is saying is one horsepower is this amount of what? So here, these horsepower units cancel. And we just take the 450 times this value because we're going from the left to right. So doing that, you do 450 times 745.7 and you get the 335565 watt. And let me ask you this. Can you go from watt to kilowatt? So a kilo is just you divide by 1,000. So to go from watt to kilowatt, all you do is take this value and divide by a thousand. That K, the K part stands for a thousand. So to go from watt to kilowatt, all you do is take this value divided by a thousand. So we take that divided by a thousand and you get 33, 335.565. And that should be kilowatt. So all you do is take this watt divided by a thousand and you get kilowatt. And I believe is the kilowatt in here though they wouldn't give you that that's something it's similar to the you can go from kilowatt to horsepower actually so it gives you the horsepower so you can go directly from horsepower to kilowatt and you'll still get the same answer using this one right horsepower to kilowatt but be careful you're going this way so you have to divide right you divide by this value to get to kilowatt so just know that if you have the fundamental unit of a watt you can divide by a thousand to get kilowatt. So let's say if you want megawatt, you divide by 10 to the six, right? Divide by 10 to the six to get megawatt. But in this case, we want kilowatt just to make it look neater at a smaller number. So that's going to be how we can get kilowatt. And I think I want to say something about watt is you have to know a watt is a joule per second. And that's actually in the table, in the conversion factors table, which is nice to have, right? It says a watt is going to be one joule per second. 
So that's going to be very important. A watt is a joule per second. Let me write that here. One watt is the same as one joule per second. So now you might be asking, now what's a joule? A joule is going to be a fundamental basic unit. A joule is the same as a newton times meter. It's like a force times distance. It's a energy or the power, right? It's a force times distance. So a joule is going to be units of force, newtons times meters. So here we know they actually give that as well here, right? So a newton meter to joule is the same, right? So you just multiply by one or divide by one. So we know a joule is one newton meter. A joule is one newton meter. So we can further reduce this is going to be newton meter per second per joule. Just note here, a watt is a joule per second and a joule is a newton meter. A joule is a newton meter. So this is the fundamental basic unit. You, newtons meter second so those are the fundamental units if you want to reduce that further so that's just an extra note for that so now let's do this one 325 horsepower 325 horsepower let's put horsepower here and we want foot pound per second foot pound per second it's like the fundamental foot pound per second is going to be the english units right now we're looking at english units so now we will go to horsepowers. The horsepower stuff is here. And what we are actually given that, right? Horsepower, you just multiply by 550. So this is saying there's 550 foot pound per second in one horsepower. So one horsepower is this amount of put foot pound per second. And this foot pound is actually a force times distance, right? The force is the pound, the distance is the feet. So it's like a force times distance for that one. And this is going to be per second. So that's an important conversion that's common. So these cancel, we have foot pound per second. Just note here, maybe they'll ask you, you want foot pound per minute, right? So you have to convert the units and be very careful with the time units as well. And possibly the feet units, the length units. But that's what we want at the very end, and that's what we get. So we get 325 times 550. And you get about 178, 750 foot pound per second. So that's the answer for that one. And the very last one is 1200 centimeter. 1200 centimeter we know. Do we have that here? So let's go, let's maybe it's there centimeter. To inches so we can go from centimeter to inches then we can go from inches to feet because we know there's 12 inches in one foot so the fundamental one here is this so you're not gonna always directly go to the correct units but you want to reduce that amount of work you have to do right using this actually they give us that sorry they give us the centimeter to feet so they give us the centimeter to feet here right so we can go from centimeter to feet going this way yeah sorry so I should have seen that but we can go from centimeter to feet by divided by this value we're going from the right to left so you have to divide right you're going this way so we divide just by that value of the this one 30.48 so you take 30.48 centimeter in one foot that's what that's saying and we get foot at the end so 1200 divided by 30.48 and you get 39.370 feet so that's how you can get 1200 centimeters that amount of feet that's how you can convert that so that's a few examples but i highly recommend you go in this table and look over it so look over it and notice which conversions they get they give so notice which conversions they give here this k i believe is kips even though you usually use lowercase k but this k you can go from kips to newtons that's a big one again a joule per second is one watt that's a good one to know we can go from joules to foot pound pound foot what else do we have kilogram to pound mass you can go from kilogram to pounds so pounds is going to be the english units kilogram is the si units or you can go this way as well you can go from pounds to kilogram that's a good one you can kilowatt to 
horsepower. This is also a good one. You can go from the SI units to the English units of kilopascal to PSI. So that can be helpful. You can go from kilometer per hour to miles per hour if you need to. Like you have the speed in kilometer per hour and you can convert it to the US units or English units of miles per hour and vice versa. You can do the other way. So there's just a lot in here that is very useful if you are taking this FE exam and the big one I think is going to be the miles to feet right this one miles to feet some people have that memorized but this says you can go from miles to this feet so there's 5 to 80 feet in one mile in this case right we can use that that's a good one to know as well miles to feet but yeah I would recommend you go over this and this is going to be a very powerful tool that you want to make sure you know how to use on the FE exam. That's it. Thank you.